your posture as you go down. That's an important part of the side roll. So the next one is the cartwheel. And uh, I think the cartwheel is usually seen as some kind of acrobatic or gymnastic type of uh, ukemi, but it's very important in real uh, traditional combat fighting, and I'll, uh, I'll show you why in a second. But before we get into that, Mickey, why don't you do a, a cartwheel for the folks just to see, uh, see what it looks like. Okay, you can see that he's doing basically the kind of cartwheel that you remember from uh, high school, uh, cheerleaders or something like that, maybe a little bit more co combat oriented. We're not quite looking, we're not quite worried about uh, looking good as much as, you know, having some control. And the reason that this kind of thing is important is because, and I'm going to put Mickey on the spot here, um, if you were had a weapon or a pack, if you're in the military, or a baton or a sword like we're going to do right now, and you had to hit the ground or you were rolling or falling or being thrown, you can imagine how awkward it would be for Mickey to do the side roll that we just were practicing with the sword on. He wouldn't be able to do it. As he was going down to the ground, and he, he couldn't just roll easily and come up out of it. So now this time, as he's going down to the ground, instead of rolling sideways, he's just gonna do a cartwheel. And you can see that he can still manage the sword. This is really important. Uh, skill, particularly if you're doing traditional uh, martial arts in which you were carrying uh, a sword, or even in modern day if you, uh, you know, had a, a police baton on your belt or you were in the military and you had a rucksack on, uh, you're falling, you need to be able to just come off, off the ground and not uh, be fouled by your own gear as you're trying to uh, uh, protect yourself and keep yourself from uh, being injured. So uh, practice the cartwheel, and once you feel that you've got the cartwheel down pretty, uh, pretty well, um, put a sword on your belt and uh, get used to having that extra piece of equipment on you. And uh, I think this will uh, really take your level up um, you know, much higher than you, know, maybe the, than you thought you ever could, could be before because um, it, it's a really is a high-level skill and an important skill. Okay? All right, let's take the sword out. Uh, finally... I'm going to put this down over here. Finally, the last uh, one that we want to do in this series, and clearly there's many, many different variations of these techniques. There's many different angles that uh, we're not covering here. Um, that's your homework. Um, I think we have nine that we've slated out to, to be on this video, but uh, of those nine, there's nine combinations of nine and nine variations of those nine and nine variations of those nine just on and on and on, every which angle, every which way, um, in combination, from a side roll to a front roll to back roll, and, uh, and, and you should be practicing all of those. This is kind of the fun part of it. Uh, let's do the, the front break fall and before we wrap up this section. So the front break fall is when you're falling flat on your face and you just can't do the front roll. So Mickey, if you'll do that. Um, and the important parts here is, if you can just kind of break that down, as he goes down, he puts his arms kind of at, as, a, as a triangle here. Can you see that? His hands are just on the triangle. He goes down, not on his wrists, but on his forearms. He bends his knee here to kind of slow the fall. He uses the back leg as a kind of counterweight, a counter pendulum, and he turns his face to make sure he doesn't smack his face into the ground. But uh, that's the front break fall. Do that again, please, Mick. Okay, that's great. And again, we put a sword in his belt. Quite awkward to try to do that front roll that we were doing in the very beginning of the video. You can imagine this thing is going to hit into the ground and dig into the dirt and may fall out and everything else. But again, he's being shoved forward, he's being put forward, he needs to get down real quickly because there's an arrow heading uh, for his head or something like that. He needs to get down, he does the front break fall, and he's still safe. He had just enough room, even with this long, uh, this long sword here, he had just enough room to, to fit that sword in there without it uh, digging into the ground. He's back up and he's ready to fight. So. Um, I'm going to ask you to do that one more time from the side, Mick, just so that everybody can see um, what that looks like from the side. OK. 
okay? And that's our basic front brake fall. And if you practice those nine uh, pieces of ukemi, I think you'll have most of the fundamentals, most of the principles that you need to, uh, to keep yourself from being injured if you're falling. And also, once you get good at them, you can use them as part out of your fighting techniques and your waza. And I think uh, some of the uh, footage that we're using from outside, it's clear that uh, myself and some of the other instructors were actually using some of these movements, hitting the ground, using the ground as part of the technique to create certain angles and certain safe spots in the technique. And that all comes from uh, the skills that we learn from these basic ukemi. And once you get good at them, then you're gonna be able to uh, mix and match them with your other techniques. It becomes a very, very effective piece of your self-defense and your ability to defend others in this art. The second part that we're going to be working on is called Tai Henjutsu. And a rough English translation would be movement or techniques that are used in a difficult position. And we're going to have a very difficult position here because Mickey's going to have a sword. Even though it's a wooden one, it's still very dangerous in his hands. And uh, I'm going to be trying to get out of, way, out of the way. We have two or three different techniques that we're going to use to get out of the way. And I think there's some good principles in here for movement, for Budo Taijutsu movement that uh, all of you are going to be able to uh, get a lot out of because I sure did when I've been practicing them and when they were taught to me. Uh, the first one is kind of uh, hark harkens back to what we were talking about, about the roles in Ukemi, and that you have to learn how to take those basic eight or nine roles that we did in the eight or nine pieces of Ukemi that we uh, practiced and be able to use them in context. That is mix and match them, use different angles, uh, to accomplish uh, what you're trying to accomplish, which basically is to stay safe in a dangerous position or a difficult position. In the first uh, technique here, we're going to do kind of modified front slash side roll, and um, I'm going to use it to escape uh, a downward attack, uh, Dai Jodan attack in the, in the sword here. So as Mickey comes down to attack me, you can see that I... And you can see that I'm just rolling out of the way. And let me, let me show you that roll again, because as it comes down, I have to s turn my body here and pull this leg. I'm watching him. And, and I, I'm uh, about as safe as I can be in such a uh, very difficult position. Uh, the things that I want you to do, to try to watch, uh, to look for this last time is, <clears throat> this roll is not a two-dimensional roll. I'm not rolling in a circle like, uh, like a hula hoop. My roll is more like, almost like a corkscrew. It's a three-dimensional roll. Not only am I rolling over this way in roughly a 45-degree angle, but I'm also twisting my spine at the same time. So I'm rolling and twisting, kind of like a cat. If you drop the cat from its feet, it would twist its body so that its feet could land on the ground. And I'm doing kind of the same thing to twist my body out of the way. Okay? And you can see that um, there's really three dimensions to that movement. And uh, you want to practice not only rolling forward at the 45, but kind of rolling and twisting at the same time. And it's hard to see in the camera, but Mickey could tell you, I'm looking him right in the eye the entire roll. And if you can't watch your opponent as you do this, then you're not in quite the right position. So that's the way to uh, check it. You, you should be able to see him, look him right in the eye as you do this roll. Another way to escape that same kind of uh, attack and without rolling is to uh, actually pull your body out of the way using your spine as the center of gravity. And it's a very difficult technique, but the problem with it is, it is when you see it for the first time, as I saw it when I saw Hatsumi Sensei, my teacher, do it for the first time, it looked easy. So I guess the only thing I can say to warn you on this is 
uh, it's not as easy as it looks and uh, you have to really practice this for a long time before you can uh, do this well. I know I had to do it for, for many, many years before I uh, got to the point where I felt even remotely comfortable using this against a guy that has a sword. Um, let, let's just take a look at the technique and then we'll break it down. I'll show you what I think are the important principles that are involved and the things that you need to look out for. So Mickey's attacking just straight down at my head again this time and I'm going to move out this way. If you could do it a little faster, just like that. It looks very simple, doesn't it? Looks very simple, doesn't it? What has to happen here is this right side of your body has to be pulled out of the way. Okay? What, what that means is that the left side doesn't do anything. Now this, again, is a little bit anti-intuitive because you want to step and you'll find yourself wanting to step to the left. And I guess the most important thing is that your left side is already out of the way. So to make any movement on the, with the left side is really unnecessary and slows down the process of getting your other half out of the way. And if Mickey is really attacking fast, you, you, you need to move fast. If you notice, I'm not even moving my left leg. Why? Because it's already out of the way. I don't need to, I don't need to move it. Okay, so uh, let me just do that my 